I have always wanted to watch Mani Ratnam's 1987 beloved classic Nayagan and after having seen it I can definitely say that it is worth all the love and praise it gets. It is India's own gangster masterpiece that left a strong impact on me once the credits began rolling. The film opens with our protagonist Velu as a young boy. He gets captured by police officers to give up his father's location, who was being hunted by the corrupt cops for being a union leader fighting for his basic rights. As Velu is being interrogated by the cops, the framing is tight. It's a frame within a frame, putting us in Velu's shoes, stuck and claustrophobic. But as an empathetic officer protects Velu, the frame opens up more. But little does Velu know that this is an act to trace him to his father. This leads to Velu witnessing his father getting shot dead. During his father's funeral, the cop who shot him pays him a visit. Velu uses this opportunity to stab him to death and runs off to Bombay. And amongst the many murders that take place in the movie, two of them are in slow motion. The first one being the death of the officer and the last one which I will talk about later. This serves a narrative purpose. A young Velu, now alone in Bombay, feels alien. He is a Tamilian in a Hindi-speaking community. That is until another Tamilian boy finds him and takes him to the slums where the other Tamilians are living. When Velu is brought by his new friend, the tight framing returns once again. There's a frame within a frame, visually showing how the Tamilians are struggling to fit in a Hindi-speaking community. And after Velu learns a bit of advice from his foster father that grows to define him, there's a time jump to the point where Velu is now an adult. He is loved by his community. He is rebellious, but most importantly, he still strongly sticks to the belief about justifying his wrongdoings. And what makes him an engaging and compelling protagonist is the fact that he acts on these beliefs. He makes an unfair trade with a don his father works for and gets paid extra money which he gives to his father which at first seems like a heroic act but it is also reckless. Velu then has to suffer the consequences of his actions as the don through the help of the police murders Velu's father and declare it as a suicide. Velu is understandably upset and angered by his father's death by the police for the second time. And just like he did as a kid, he murders the police officer responsible. And when he strikes the final blow, there is a sustained musical note that plays. When Velu earlier found his father dead in the police station, a similar sustained note is played. So this use of music connects us to Velu and his revenge, which is a catalyst for the future events of the film. Through this act, Velu gains power and respect in his community. He begins to assert dominance to fight for his people. For example, Velu and his people demolish the house of a contractor who threatened to displace the Tamilians from their homes. Again, this may seem like an act of heroism, but then the film adds complexity to a simple revenge as Velu gets to know that the officer he killed had a wife and son, and his son is mentally challenged. Velu didn't just kill a bad man, he made a wife a widow and a son fatherless. And so, out of a sense of shame and guilt, he makes sure to take care of his son Ajit. His actions have consequences no matter how right or wrong. Velu falls for Neela, who he finds working in a brothel, and after their marriage, there's a montage of their life together as a couple. This is when the film again makes a time jump to the point where they now have two kids. Velu's ascension continues as his power and connections grow, but he also makes more enemies as a consequence. As Velu becomes the dawn of the sea trade, the men he dethroned end up killing Neela, his wife. Velu wants his children to now lead a different life, a life away from bloodshed and violence. This is when the film begins to explore the theme of generational violence. Now I think it's time we talked about how this film is heavily influenced by the Godfather movies. I mean, yeah, it's a gritty gangster movie, but you can tell that Mani is a huge fan from other similarities. Such as, there's a scene lifted from the famous baptism scene in the first Godfather, as the men who murdered Velu's wife are killed. Velu doesn't want his son to follow his footsteps, just like how Vito doesn't want Michael to follow his footsteps. Both fathers lost a son who died inside a car. Both Vitu and Velu witnessed their parents' death at a young age and are displaced from their homes. The astounding cinematography is also heavily influenced from The Godfather. In the 1972 classic, many interior shots are lit directly above the actors, creating this contrast and shadows that reflect the inner turmoil of dark versus light, good versus evil. There's a similar lighting pattern observable in Nyagan. There are still pale yellow lights that create heavy shadows in the frame, which is very reminiscent of The Godfather movies. After Velu leaves his children, another time jump occurs. This time, his children are all grown up and Velu has become older. He has a healthy relationship with his daughter Charu and his son Surya. 
In a scene where a man comes to Velu to seek help, Surya takes the lead and acts just like his father and Velu does not like this. He is actively against Surya doing anything regarding his work because he wants his lineage to continue clean. We also see the police officer's son Ajit all grown up as well. He wishes to be a police officer just like his father. Velu feels more guilty and it's shown in Kamal's face. After Velu assists a police officer by harming the attacker of his daughter, Velu's daughter Charu is immediately against her father and his actions. She questions his morality in a way that I've never really seen before in commercial films. In many masala movies, the film worships the main hero and their stardom. He's treated like a godlike figure who can do no wrong and is always right no matter what. And even in Ayagan, the character of Velu is somewhat like a godlike figure to his people. But what it does is that it lets us know that it is self-aware. The characters talk about how loved and admired he is, and this is set up so that Charu and Velu himself are forced to question this. Charu asks her father whether he thinks he is God, and it's a genius piece of writing as it takes this trope from commercial films and poses philosophical questions regarding it. Is Velu really a God? Does he deserve to be worshipped? Are his actions just and moral? Are his actions forgivable? And after a hurtful argument with his daughter, Velu is forced to ponder about these questions even further. There is a brilliant scene where Charu asks him to stop and Kamal gives a fantastic monologue where he recounts all his past traumas and incidents and talks about how he will stop only when he stops facing injustice. But Charu also does have a point as she points out the flaw in Velu's internal belief. This is when Velu's belief starts to get challenged and he has to rethink things. Surya wishes to help his father when there's a witness waiting to testify in court against him. Velu again does not want this but at this time in his life he has no one else to help him. So with a heavy heart he allows it but it tragically ends in Surya getting burned to death in his car. And the scene after this is heartbreaking. Everyone but Velu knows the truth. But Velu is confused and clueless. Everyone is consoling him but this only makes him more worried because he realizes that something terrible has happened but doesn't know what it is. Kamal Hassan's acting is phenomenal. His facial expressions and body language convey everything. The scene uses negative space and silence to add to the suspense and impending doom. The camera is from Velu's point of view as it follows him and reveals information when Velu learns said information of his dead son. Velu's heartbreak is painful as he begins to lose everyone in his family one by one. This is what he had feared for his children and it is all now coming to fruition. Nayagan's daughter Charu is understandably angry towards her father. His actions have caused their entire family to suffer. Charu decides that she is going to leave her father and start a new life. We feel bad for Velu because she is all he has and once she leaves, he is truly alone as he now has no one, no one to call his own. He is just a sad old man with more power than he knows what to do with. After Charu abandons her father, another time jump takes place and the timing of these time jumps are carefully done. They occur after a significant event in Velu's life, after he gets adopted, after he gets married, after he leaves his children and after each time jump, we get to see how Velu's life has changed due to these very significant events. Then an assistant commissioner is introduced whose main goal is to make sure Velu Naikar is arrested. When Velu goes to the assistant commissioner's house, he realizes that Charu is married to him, mainly because she feels that she can cleanse her sins if she is on the side of the law. She doesn't even let Velu meet his grandson and as the assistant commissioner gets an arrest warrant for her father, which she doesn't even know about, Velu goes into hiding. And since he is loved by so many, they refuse to give up information about Velu's whereabouts from the cops and they have to suffer for it. Men, women and children are brutally beaten by the police and old woman burns herself to prevent the cops from reaching Velu. People die for him and I love that we get to see Velu's perspective on this as he's terribly heartbroken by this. It shatters him to see the people he loves in such a bad state just for him. He believes that he does not deserve any of this. He doesn't want anyone to suffer for his sake. It takes the hero worshipping trope in commercial cinema and explores the nuances of it and lets us know what the hero himself feels about this and how it affects him. The assistant commissioner in need of witnesses against Velu goes around asking for people to give him up but no one does. He even tells Ajit's mother that Velu had killed her husband in an attempt to convince her to testify against Velu but she refuses. 
Unfortunately, Ajith overhears this, and in the climax, as Belu is arrested and then held in court, Charu, out of the little love she has for her father, lets him meet his grandson. And then comes one of the most iconic scenes in Tamil cinema. Velu's grandson, who's named after him, asks him whether he is a good or bad man, and Velu says that he doesn't know. And it's a sad yet also beautiful piece of writing because in many commercial films we see the hero make so many choices, but in Nayagan, Velu has to face the consequences for every choice, and his morality is questioned. Maybe our hero isn't completely a hero, yet we still feel bad for him. And in the end, Velu is let free, but before there's a happy ending, a vengeance-seeking Ajit shoots him down, avenging his father, as Velu pays for the final consequence leading to his demise. And the choice to have this death play out in slow motion is poetic because both the first and last deaths of the film are slowed down, where a young Velu avenges the death of his father and Ajit avenges the death of his father. There is a thematic significance to this creative decision. As Velu breathes his last, the film once again plays the theme song of the film, Ten Pande Chemayile, cutting back to moments from the film with Velu, making me feel like I have been on an emotional journey witnessing someone's entire life. I was simply shocked. I could not believe what I had witnessed, how something this magnificent was made. Rarely had such a film moved me so much. Mani Ratnam's direction, Kamal Hassan's unbelievable performance, the visually rich cinematography and everything else just made for an unforgettable cinematic experience that I will continue to revisit very often. Thank you so much for watching this video. Like, share, subscribe. You know the drill and see you next time. Bye-bye.